Hey everyone. I was in Savers a couple of weeks ago and those of you who follow this channel might know I am kind of a thrift store fan. So what do I see in the electronics area, speaking of fans, but a notebook fan cooling top and a T5. I think the company is Nuoxin or Nuoxin, Chinese, of course, but it was five bucks and didn't have any instructions, didn't have the USB cable. But I had a brainstorm and I said to myself, why not pick that fan pad up and use it because summer is coming, use it as a cooler for my SX42 receiver, which is, a, as, you, as you might know, is a 15 tube monster. Right now it's under the dust cover. But I picked up a USB to USB jack, powered it up off of one of those uh, iHome battery, uh, external battery packs. And it works great. Um, it has five fans, uh, four little ones, and then a big one in the middle. Uh, you can see here it, it's got, well, covers maybe about seven eighths of the top of, of the radio. And what I want to do is pull heat off of the chassis, not pull air into it, because that will introduce dust and just wouldn't wouldn't be right. So I, I played around with the fans a little bit, and the four little ones uh, pull air with this upside down. In other words, if I flip this, and I flip it in this direction right here, um, we get, see if I can remember this right. Yeah, the, the center one will pull up. If we have it in this direction, the four little fans will pull air up. So that's the way we're going to go. Thermometer here. Um, right now, room temperature is uh 68 degrees on, on the thermostat although this one's saying about 71 we're going to power this up for a couple of hours and we're going to take temperature measurements at the rectifier and the power transformer and see what kind of temperatures we get um, and then we'll let it cool and then we'll turn this guy on and see if that makes a difference. Uh, do the same thing, run it for a couple of hours, and uh, introduce cooling to it. I take that back. I think we'll, we'll power it up for a couple of hours with the fans on. And then we'll take our measurements. So, next, uh, let's power up the radio and we'll take some temperature measurements. We're going to start at one of the hottest points of the radio, and that's right down at the power transformer. This is our 5U4G rectifier tube. Uh, we're going to fire it up, let it run a couple of hours, and then take a uh, temperature reading uh, both at the base of the transformer and then at the rectifier tube. And see how warm we get uh, but just to show you there's no chicanery no trickery here we've got our radio shack thermometer right now it's reading 73 and there is the probe right there right at the power transformer so we'll fire it up close up the lid and give it a couple of hours okay two hours later it's getting dark out and I think we're at a good operating temperature. A couple of hours warmed up. And our transformer is at 
101.3 degrees. So let's move the probe right on top of the rectifier. We'll wait a few minutes, let it get to the right reading temperature. See how warm our rectifier is. And at the base of our rectifier tube, we're measuring 142.7. Thereabouts, just went down to 138. You get the idea, it's about 140 degrees or so. So let's fire up this fan and see how we can cool things down. Hopefully cool things down a little bit. There's our T5 fan made by New Oxy. We're going to turn on the little fans made by LEDs. See them right there. Powered by our iHome battery pack. So we'll let this run for a couple of hours and then take some temperatures. All right, two hours of cooling on the transformer and she is held steady at 74.5 degrees. Well, it's come down to 74.3, but it's run that 74.3, 74.5 for a couple of hours now. So we started out after two hours without cooling at 101.3. Point three, so it went down what twenty, almost twenty, twenty-seven degrees. So let's put the uh, probe onto the rectifier and see if we gain any cooling there. At our rectifier tube, we are at a hundred and sixteen. We were at one forty-two. Point seven. So, tw what, 20, 26 degrees cooler? Seems to be doing quite well. And this fan is having the effect that I wanted it to have, which is to cool things down. You see here I put some felt all the way around because if I shut this off, if I flip this around like so, and I run our big fan in the middle, remember we want to pull air out there's our big fan on it's just one fan so if we run the little fans we want to go in this direction and flip the little fans on. So I'm going to show you next where I set up the temperature probe. So you see here's the chassis of this beautiful SX42. For the rectifier tube that's where I put the probe and for the transformer I put it right in the back corner right below it. So what did we learn? One of the worst enemies of electronics, I don't care if it's vacuum tube electronics or solid state or integrated circuits, is heat. Now, when I, when I originally posted this idea online, uh, naysayers were all over me saying, these things were designed to run hot, you're going to change the stability of of the receiver this radio is rock solid stable and 
I'd say 45 minutes to an hour of warm-up, you're fine. And honestly, this fan, I'm probably only going to keep running during the summer months, which, you know, we're coming up on summer here in New England. May is around the corner, and then June and July, you want these things to run cool. So, I think the numbers kind of bear it out. Cooling fans work for vacuum tube electronics. At least it works nicely on the SX42. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Kind of a scientific or unscientific test. If anyone's got some better ideas on, on how to cool these 70 year old vacuum tube radios, I'm all ears. If you have a better way, I'd love to know. Take care for now. I had to do one more shot of this in total darkness. If you decide to do this project, well, you get the side benefit of Vegas in the Radio Shack about the coolest looking total darkness effect. Kind of reminds me of the Vegas Strip.